Hi, I'm Jennifer Duclair, the Bar Exam Mentor, here to help you increase your multiple choice questions scores so that you can pass your exam. I know a lot of Bar Exam takers who have studied, studied, and studied. And yet when they go to take their practice exams and they do practice questions, they're getting wrong the questions that they should have gotten right. After you spend hours and hours and hours of your weeks studying and you're still not getting the questions right, it can be really defeating and discouraging and make you start thinking that you're never going to pass this exam. Maybe you chose the wrong field and this thing is not for you. Will you ever get through this phase or did you just waste three plus years of your life and six figures in student loan debt? I'm here to tell you that none of that is true. You are absolutely where you belong. If you were inspired to go to law school and you actually made it through to this stage, then you deserve to become an attorney. We're going to pinpoint our focus on multiple choice questions, why you may be getting them wrong and what to do about it so that you can see an immediate change in your score. Let's dive in. One of the most important things that we skip, even though we know we shouldn't, is practice questions. And the reason why a lot of test takers do this is because practice questions have become a source of punishment, bad feelings. You just don't wanna do it because it makes you feel really, really not smart. Even though you've put in hours of studying, you're still getting wrong questions that you should have been getting right. What gives? Well, there's actually a really succinct explanation for all of that. But before I can even touch on that, because it's actually a, a deep mind blowing answer and I gotta get you ready for it. Let's go through what you should be doing when it comes to practice questions in order to make it a useful exercise and not just a period of punishment during your study session. When you do practice questions, I want you to consider changing to this methodology. First, instead of doing the question and then checking to see if you got it right and then doing the question and then checking to see if you got it right, thereby breaking your concentration like a gazillion times in your one study session. No wonder you never finished all the designated practice questions. Instead of doing it that way, do all of your practice questions in one sitting, take a break and then go over the answers that you put down for those practice questions and see if you got them right. Thereby completing an entire block of questions. And if you want to, you can call it a day for your studies, giving yourself a break and coming back and having one focus, one mode of focus as you go over your, your answers to the questions and whether you got them right or wrong. Instead of switching from one focus to another, keep one focus for the entire study block. You will get your practice questions out of the way a whole lot faster and with much less pain if you go about it that way. The second thing to do when it comes to practice questions is keep a running list of what you got wrong, what the right answer was, but most importantly, why you got it wrong. Now, this is important. A lot of us don't take the time to do that self-reflection, but this is the one thing that can give you control over your bar exam score. If you can be self-aware enough to observe what happened when I was reading that question and answering it, did the dog bark? Did the phone ring? Did I just zone out? Did I really not know the law? Or did I second guess myself and change my answer? You see, a lot of times we skip this self-reflection and when we get to the end of our, our practice question review and we tally up the score, we just chalk it up to, oh, I didn't know the law. Oh my goodness, I don't know this much of the law. I've been studying for hours. How could I have missed all of this? And then it just starts to sp spiral downwards. Your emotions spiral downwards and you start feeling worse and worse about yourself and your abilities and your brain and you start second guessing yourself. When in fact, what I found with the clients that I work with who have this particular issue is that the 
biggest ranking reason, highest ranking reason why they got questions wrong was second guessing themselves. And once they were clear on that and realized that it, it's not that their brain wasn't working, is that something else was kicking in and taking away the correct answer from their hands, then they were able to feel a little bit better and focus on the real solution to this fluctuating scores problem, okay? So that's the second thing I'd advise you to do is to keep a running list of not only what you got wrong and what the right answer was, but also why you got it wrong. The third thing to do while you are approaching your practice questions, it flies in the face of a lot of conventional teachings. Skip the whole what I got right and why I got it right. You're wasting time, first of all. Take the win and focus on what you don't know and focus on why you got those questions wrong so that you can fix those things and add more points to your right column, right? Um, why you got it right and going over that ad nauseum not only wastes a lot of time, but it actually makes the issue of second guessing oneself worse. And I'll explain to you why later, but you just try it, right? At least for a week with your practice questions and see if it doesn't make a difference in how many questions you get complete and how your scores inch up as you focus your time in on where you can actually make a difference, which is adding points back in to your score as opposed to pointlessly going over what you got right. Because I wanna make sure I got it right for the right reasons. No, just answer the question and move on, right? Focus on what you got wrong <laughs> and the reasons why you got those wrong. Okay, when, when my clients apply this to their multiple choice sessions, to their practice sessions, their scores inch up, right? Because it's a, it's a three-pronged approach to it. And it really solves all the problems that are standing in your way when it comes to scoring well on multiple choice. Now, what about those people out there? And there are some out there and some of you are in my lovely circle. What about those people who believe I'm just not good at multiple choice? I'm just not good at it, or I need extra time to complete multiple choice. Um, and there are some other beliefs out there that essentially make it so that all of the advice that I just gave you won't help you because you actually have a real belief that your mind is invested in making come true, um, that you're not good at it or that you need extra time to do it or, or et cetera. What about people who have ingrained beliefs or you know everything that I just taught you and yet you still are second guessing yourself right? Because that is the biggest reason why people get questions wrong in multiple choice is that they second guess themselves. They either go back to change answers that were already correct or the first answer they put down, they feared it wasn't correct and they went back to change it. Or in the midst of reading the question answers and coming up with the answer, they hesitated on the first thought and went with a different thought and uh, as you probably know, when you go back to review your questions, you realize my first thought was the right one. I should have gone with my first thought. But even though you know that, you keep doing it. You keep second guessing yourself. You keep pausing and answering with your second answer. You keep going back and changing answers. One reason is because the proof is not in the pudding. You have not gone over your question answers to see why you got them wrong and realize that 10 times out of 10, when you second guess yourself, you got it wrong, right? Um, but then the, the other reason is something that's much deeper and harder to work on. And it's something that I, I want to help you start to unravel now. Second guessing oneself really sources down to, I gotta get it right. I can't get it wrong. I can't afford to fail this time. I need a pass. I need to hurry up and do this. I've been doing this for way too long. What if I get it wrong? These worry provoking thoughts is what pushes the second guessing. This is what makes it so that even if you try your hardest to instill self-control and just not do it, you still do it. You still second guess, you still change your answers. Even unconsciously, you don't even realize that you're pausing for one millisecond and going with the other option. You don't even realize you're doing it and yet you're doing it. 
if you practice the way of grading your answers that I've advised you to, you will catch yourself in self-reflection. You will catch, yeah, I did pause. I did change my mind at the last minute. You'll catch it. And even though you see it happening, you can't stop yourself. And the reason why is that all those worry thoughts source down to self-confidence. Self-confidence is the big idea behind low or fluctuating multiple choice scores. Without self-confidence, which is built on a thick foundation of a bunch of different elements, but without sufficient self-confidence, at least in this area of the bar exam, you will be destined to see fluctuating scores and no rhyme or reason to the questions you got right and the questions you got wrong. Just, just no logical explanation for it. Sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong. It's the self-confidence bit. And that's the part that we need to work on together. When I work with clients on self-confidence with this, we discover that it's sourced from years ago, things that built upon each other over the decades. I mean, come on, by the time you finish law school, you're two plus decades old, right? And we have to get down to the source of it and unravel it there so that they can finally rid themselves of it. What they find when they go back into uh, the, the depths of where this, this low self-confidence comes from and how to correctly address it so that it's fast and as painless as possible. This is the difference between what we do in the bar exam mentoring circle and what we do when we work together from a mindset point of view versus I'm gonna go read some books or I'm gonna go to therapy for my self-confidence. You could be there for years, right? We have a method that gets you through it quickly in keeping with the fact that you have a test to go study for, right? And so when we dig in, dive deep and start addressing it at its root, my clients realize that this thing would have been hanging over their head into their attorney careers, into you know, standing up and trying to negotiate with opposing counsel, properly pricing their services as they offer their uh, legal expertise to potential clients, and a host of other areas where confidence makes a difference. When they look at their, their lives currently, they realize, yeah, it's affecting me in other places too. Now, as lawyer types, we don't like to admit our flaws and, and where we fall short on things, but the faster we're honest with ourselves, the faster we can solve it so that we can go on and live our best lives. So I invite you to take a minute and, and check out the link that I've posted below. For the next two weeks, I'm going to host a one hour workshop where we will peel away the layers of the source for this low self-confidence and start to work on it so that you can eradicate it and see a steady improvement in your bar exam score. And if you're taking all this advice that I gave you above about how to go about your practice questions and you're applying it, and yet you know, if, if we're honest with ourselves, we just know that, yeah, this self-confidence bit is going to be a persistent issue whether or not, um, I'm applying all this advice that I've been given. In fact, I've heard this advice before and my score still didn't budge, right? Or my score still didn't steady themselves. They didn't become predictable. Then you know that there's a deeper issue. There's a mindset thing going. And the sooner that you get that resolved and out of the way, the better. So I'm hosting a one hour workshop in the next two weeks, the last week of January, the first week of February, 2021. If the link is not below anymore, that's because the workshops are not live any longer. But in one hour, we'll work together and I will be there for massive Q&A and one-on-one um, -on -one coaching in that group session. We will laser coach you and get you through so that at least you can get some headway with the confidence issue and start to see your scores stabilize and become more predictable. It's $37, this workshop. Token amount, just to ensure that there's some part of you that's invested in getting this work done, right? And I know you've, you've been to law school, you've done, you've done um, the bar review courses, you've, you've done all the things. Of course you're invested, yes? Yeah, except this is mindset work. It's completely different from just the academics. And in fact, without the mindset, your academics are just gonna give you the same results they've always gotten, right? You need the mindset component so that all your hard work will finally 
bear some fruit. I invite you to click the link below, choose your date and time, join us for this intense one hour deep, deep dive session, right? Into the mindset issue that surrounds anxiety and low self-confidence with the bar exam so that you can see a higher score. I'll see you inside, yeah? Talk to you soon. Bye for now.